So in the wake of Mandalorian Season 3 ending, there's been a lot of discussion about it being badly written. And within those debates, I've often seen people attest that none of The Mandalorian has ever had good writing, making Season 3 not much different from the previous seasons. Now, I'm not going to go about defending The Mandalorian's writing and claim it's fantastic or anything like that. I will say that I think Seasons 1 and 2 had better writing, or at least better editing, than Season 3, even if that writing still wasn't good by whatever standards people apply to TV shows. But none of that is relevant to this video. Instead, I want to look at one of the more popular examples of the bad writing in past seasons, which has to do with the Imperial Computer Terminal Mando uses in Season 2, Episode 7, The Believer. In that episode, Din accesses a terminal inside a secret Imperial mining hub to obtain the coordinates of Moff Gideon's ship, since he rightly assumed that Grogu was being held on it. The decriers of the Mandalorian's writing like to cite this as an example of bad, lazy, or downright stupid writing, describing the terminal as a computer with top-secret Imperial info on it that anyone with a face who isn't on a New Republic watch list can access. On the face of it, this does in fact sound ridiculous, but it's both an oversimplification and a misrepresentation of the scene and how the device works. Firstly, the information on there isn't necessarily top secret. There's no reason the position of a ship in a military should be unknowable to the rest of the military. And also, if it's top secret information, why the heck would the terminal just be sitting there for any Imperial personnel to access? Surely it should be locked in an officer's room or something. Then there's the whole, you just need a face thing. It's really there just as a check that you're not a droid or a known Imperial enemy, which is a logical safeguard to have. Note, it's an internal terminal, as in inside a theoretically secure Imperial base, so usually only Imperial personnel will have access to it. No reason to hide it or add more security. Also, don't forget they brought Mayfield along because he knows Imperial clearance codes, so it seems reasonable to conclude that he either gave Din the code, which is what Din entered before the terminal scanned his face, or the data stick Din took from Mayfield entered the code automatically before searching for Gideon's ship. Either way, some form of password was still likely being used. And before you complain about this still being too contrived, I want to point out that this type of system also exists in the real world, just like much of the technology in Star Wars. In this case, it's similar to the IBM AS400 system. I've worked in multiple places that use these things. They're prehistoric systems so bad even a high schooler using Java can make a better looking, more user-friendly one. In my opinion, too much of our modern society still relies on these monstrosities. I mean, the tech is from the early 1980s. It's over 40 years old at this point. However, this also means that it dates from the same time period most Star Wars tech is based on, which makes for a pretty fair comparison. So at a lot of businesses that own large warehouses, like Costco for example, computers running the AS400 often just sit there with all sorts of internal company info readily available. You don't technically have to be an employee to access them. All you need is a valid login, a username, and a password. Maybe you could get one from, I don't know, a former employee, possibly even one named Mayfield. Just look like an employee and no one will question it. Granted, this won't usually work in the real world and I don't recommend you try it, but for a galaxy-spanning conglomerate whose workers are usually helmeted, it's not unreasonable. Which brings to mind that line from Andor about the Empire being too arrogant to imagine anyone infiltrating an Imperial base. However, there is still the aspect of user-friendliness. Even if someone could access the terminal, most people in the galaxy wouldn't know how to navigate the database. It takes someone knowledgeable, someone like Mando, to do it, not some random farmer from Tatooine. Many of my coworkers couldn't even use the AS400 system because the interface was unfamiliar and confusing. So you can say that the way the terminal is set up in the Mandalorian means that anyone can use it, but although that's technically true, practically speaking it's not, because most people who don't directly work for either the Empire or the New Republic would likely be unfamiliar with it, and most of them wouldn't have an Imperial clearance code either. Probably the simplest way to alter this setup would have been to make the face scanner look through an Imperial database and verify that you are Imperial thus preventing just anyone from getting in and forcing Mayfield to be the one to access the data in the episode instead of Din. Of course, implementing that solution would require maintaining a database of Imperial personnel, which, given the rate of Stormtrooper deaths, would be a logistical nightmare and wouldn't make sense in-universe. Plus, it still wouldn't prevent the terminal from being accessed by traitors or spies. 
My point is that this particular plot point isn't stupid, and it isn't bad writing. It's actually more realistic than a lot of other contrived devices in Star Wars. Don't forget, we're talking about the same empire that controls mile-long triangles of scrap metal in the making, using only a bunch of little consoles covered in unlabeled buttons and switches. So, I'm not sure why you'd expect the random computer terminal to have advanced security features. Again, I'm not saying that The Mandalorian as a whole is well-written. Even in this same episode, there are other things I could call into question. All I'm saying is that the way this terminal works isn't really a result of bad writing and shouldn't be used as an example of such. Anyways, that's my observation. Maybe you see differently. Either way, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and above all, thanks for watching. Goodbye.